Hello everyone, welcome again to another Word for Today with Ray. And before we begin, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, it is a joy every single day to come before you knowing that we have your Word before us and that you're wanting to teach us about yourself, your Son Jesus, and your ways. And Heavenly Father, it's just, just so much fun to know that our God wants us to know him. And so today I pray through this book of Esther, Again, Lord, we will learn more about you and that you will guide us into all truth by your Holy Spirit and then empower us to live according to those truths, that it may be pleasing in your eyes. And we'll give you thanks for these things in Jesus' name. Amen. The title to today's lesson is A Day of Feasting, Joy, Sending Portions and Gifts. And it's taken from the book of Esther, chapter 9, and verse 22. Mordecai's letters were sent to Jews who were spread all over the Persian Empire. The letters contained information regarding a new annual day of celebration to be enjoyed by all Jews, which would commemorate the victory over their enemies who were inspired by wicked Haman. In chapter 9 and verse 22 of the book of Esther, we see more of the instructions for this day of celebration as set out by Mordecai. We read, as the days wherein the Jews rested from their enemies, and the month which was turned unto them from sorrow to joy, and from mourning into a good day, that they should make them days of feasting and joy, and of sending portions one to another, and gifts to the poor. The verse begins, As the days wherein the Jews rested from their enemies, and the month which was turned unto them from sorrow to joy, and from morning into a good day. Three things are mentioned that occurred for the Jews during this victory. Rested from their enemies, from sorrow to joy, and from morning into a good day. We might imagine the alteration of spirit that transpired as the Jews gained victory over their enemy. Once their battle was through, they were at rest. During the battles and the threats of destruction, they experienced great sorrow. But now that the enemies were defeated, they were filled with joy. Finally, we can imagine how they mourned as they fasted and pled with God and to help them. And when they triumphed over their foes, it became a good day. Rest, joy, and a good day were at last realized. And this was a great cause for celebration. The verse continues that they should make them days of feasting and joy and of sending portions one to another and gifts to the poor. Three things should transpire as the Jews celebrated their victory. Make them days of feasting and joy, send portions one to another, and send gifts to the poor. When the 13th and 14th days of Adar came every year, the Jews were to hold a feast of joy to remember the great deliverance of their people. Each year was to be a reminder of how their sorrows were turned to joy because of God's intervention. Also, they were to spend portions of food one to another to, or to send them one to another to commemorate their triumphs. The sharing of food would remind them of what might have been if they had lost to their enemies. Finally, they were also to remember the poor who were among them and send them gifts as well. The consciousness of those who were disadvantaged would help them to realize that they too would have had nothing if not for the victories over their enemies. Feasting, joy, sending portions to one another and gifts to the poor was how the Jews would never forget the way God rescued them in their time of greatest need. As we consider this celebration of the Jews, perhaps we have remembered victories that we have won or need to win. Over and over again, we have been challenged to write down times when God has intervened for us. And we would do well to have days of celebration when we remember our victories. However, maybe we are in need of the Savior's intervention right now for a battle we are waging. Perhaps we would do well to write down that battle. Begin battling in the Spirit through prayer and ask Jesus to take up arms for us so that we will win against our foes. If so, let us begin our writing today because the celebration of joy, sending portions and gifts, and feasting is just ahead. 
Next time, we will see the Jews fulfill Mordecai's desire. So read ahead, and we shall join together then. Until tomorrow, there is more. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace as you continue to study his word in Jesus' name.